Left 4 Dead entails the story of four presumably immune survivors who form a strong bond as they travel together in hopes of finding a long-term shelter in a zombie-infested world. As they get rescued each time in an extraction zone, their rescuers fall ill to the green flu and soon turn into zombies, making them believe that this might be a curse. When they are finally extracted by military soldiers, they learn the harsh truth of what the culprit of this presumable curse is. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. You can follow me on Twitter, where you can suggest me games. This video will contain spoilers. With that in mind, let's begin. Two weeks after the outbreak of a mysterious, highly contagious disease referred to as the Green Flu, the world goes into a turmoil with most of the population contracting this disease. The disease causes acute, severe aggression, mutation to the body, and loss of higher brain functionality, leading to the infected, attacking the healthy to the point of savagely killing them and ripping them into pieces. For survivors, called William Bill Overbeck, a Vietnam War veteran, Francis, an outlaw biker, Lewis, a district account manager, and Zoe, a college student, find themselves stuck in an infested, infected road where they barely escape the newly special infected who have mutated in a unique way, giving them deadly abilities. Those special infected are Boomer, who vomits and attracts more zombies. The smoker, who uses his long tongue to strangle the survivors. The hunter, who's very agile and resilient to damage. There's the tank, which is a massive and strong infected, capable of lifting parts of concrete from the floor and throwing them at the subjects, taking large amount of ammunition to die. And finally the feared witch, a mysterious infected, who cries and minds her own business until she becomes startled. As the survivors manage to go atop a building and wave at the rescue helicopter flying about, the chopper informs them to evacuate to the Mercy Hospital, which is an extraction zone they can be picked up from. The survivors plan the safest route is through the subway, as it will lead them straight to the hospital. As they fight their way through a large horde of infected, they arrive at the subway, noticing that the trains have been derailed. With no option at hand, they continue on foot. After battling more infected, they rest in short intervals in dedicated safe houses. In there, they read multiple writings on the walls from the previous survivors, who possibly never made it to safety. One specific writing points out that the infection is not airborne, as suggested by one of the posters by SIDA, the Civil Emergency and Defense Agency, portraying that they don't know much about the disease and how it actually spreads. When the group arrives in the hospital, they witness in shock the number of zombies awaiting them. In a safe house within the hospital, they read the estimates on how long it takes the infected to show symptoms, going lower and lower, as low as to 5 minutes. The group then manages going to the roof, where they use a radio transmitter to call for rescue. A chopper soon arrives after several minutes and collects the survivors who become swarmed by zombies. As they start unwinding and feeling relieved that they are safe, the pilot of the helicopter starts turning, showing signs of infection. Zoe makes a difficult decision to end the pilot's life, which leads to the helicopter crashing at a nearby industrial site, with Bill, Francis, Lewis and Zoe miraculously surviving. The survivors, after exploring and witnessing that the area is overrun by zombies, they get in an armored truck and drive as far as they can. Their journey comes to an abrupt end when they witness their way being blocked by several vehicles and a collapsed road. After picking up hints and clues from writings that their best bet is to go to the riverside town, they decide to go there, where presumably the military has been evacuating survivors. 
After they reach a locked safe house in a church, they encounter a mentally unstable man who refuses to open the door for them. Dinner served! Come and get it! Go away! No one gets in! Ding dong! Ding dong! Dinner served! Come and get it! It's then that the survivors confess that they are immune to the green flu, making them extremely valuable to survive as they might hold the secrets for developing a cure and saving the humanity. The mentally unstable man inside the safe house explains that a survivor he let in claimed to be immune who was bit, but it turns out that he was lying as he turns into a zombie. The survivor turned zombie ultimately bites the man inside the safe house, causing him to have trust issues, developing paranoia, hence why he doesn't let the survivors in. He starts believing that he might be immune himself, as after an hour of getting bit, he doesn't turn. In order to save himself from the threats of the survivors, he rings the church's bell, attracting zombies to kill them. But soon, the safe house door opens, with the man turning into a zombie, which reveals that his growing insanity wasn't only due to his paranoia, but also from the infection taking its course and slowly infecting his mind. Losing hope that the small town of Riverside is doomed, the survivors contact a small fishing vessel through a radio transmitter who collects them and drops them off across the river in the city of Newburgh. To their dismay, they find much of the city engulfed in flames, with them resting in a nearby greenhouse momentarily. Suddenly, they see a large plane fly overhead, which they assume to be heading towards the nearby airport. With the best option left at hand, they unanimously decide to go there in hopes of boarding the plane and leaving this godforsaken city. When they arrive at the airport, which is bombed by the military in hopes of containing the disease, the survivors find a miraculously intact C-130 plane, which flew overhead earlier. The plane seems to have made a temporary stop to refuel, which unfortunately ended with the crew member's life. The survivors refueled the plane after being instructed by the surviving trapped pilot within the plane and narrowly escaped the large hordes of zombies, getting aboard the plane. Not much later, the plane crashes with the pilot turning into a zombie again. The survivors survive yet again and then find themselves in the Allegheny National Forest. A poster from Sida indicates that the next evacuation center is in Dottery Farm, which they head there. Deep in the forest, after following some train tracks, the survivors find an abandoned military outpost in the farm. They use the functional transmitters to contact the military, which soon arrives with an APC truck. They extract the survivors and transport them to one of the last remaining safe zones. In there, they run some tests to examine their immunity when they learn that the survivors don't actually have immunity and the answer to the cure. But instead, they are asymptomatic carriers who are infected with the disease but don't show any symptoms. Regardless, they still infect anyone around them, which explains how the Rescue News helicopter pilot turned into a zombie who risked his own life and did his last run to extract survivors. Therefore, he was unknowingly infected by the survivors, leading to Zoe killing him. This is also the same case with the C-130 pilot, who presumably turned into a zombie, leading to the plane crashing. Shocked to this discovery, the survivors get on guard as they become uncertain to the intentions of the military personnel. Lucky for them, due to a mutiny and internal disagreements, zombies are let in the safe zone, overrunning it, giving the survivors the opportunity to escape. The survivors, being aware that they won't be safe neither outside nor within any safe zones, with them actually being a major risk infecting other healthy survivors, they decide to go on their own. Bill insists that the group can find long-term safety in the remote islands of Florida Keys, which will keep them off mainlands and from the hordes of zombies. They all agree and travel to the portside town of Rayford.
after some looking, they finally find a sailboat. In order to place the boat in open waters, they have to remove the obstacle, which is a lift bridge powered by a generator. As the lift bridge rises, the generator gives out, still blocking the way of the boat. Soon, four special infected tanks approach the bridge, making it extremely risky to go down and restart the generator. Bill spontaneously then makes a tough decision and jumps in the hordes of zombies in order to start the generator, sacrificing himself for the group. The group atop the bridge while having teary eyes and contemplating whether to risk their own lives for a dying bill or not, watch them die slowly. While waiting for the hordes of zombies to disperse, the three remaining survivors encounter another group of survivors called Rochelle, Coach, Ellis and Nick, whom they help get across the bridge on their way to a new presumable shelter. The survivors finally manage to get on the sailboat, leaving the corpse of Belle behind, heading to the promised islands of Florida Keys. Never forgetting the sacrifice Belle made, knowing full well that they are the only family they have left. Meanwhile, the other four survivors head to New Orleans in a vehicle in hopes of finding a safe zone to live their remaining days in. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch more by clicking the cards on the screen. And you can stay tuned for Left 4 Dead 2 Story Explained by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star. Till the next video, have a fantastic day.